Hi, and welcome again to Let's Talk Tachlis. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Before I introduce and talk to you about the podcast we just concluded, I want to really, really thank you for the so many comments, emails, positive criticism, and so much heart that we got back from so many of you for our previous podcast and for the one before. It's really validating the reason why we are doing this podcast. We want to be here for Klali Sul. So many parents reached out to us, so many fathers, mothers, so many kids, boys and girls reached out for help, for guidance. And this is really filling up the, 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 the void that we have in this world and we're trying to make it a, a, the world a better place and a happier place. So really, really thank you for your input and for being such loyal listeners and viewers. Uh, we just, as I told you, we just concluded an amazing podcast with a unique human being. You'll get to know Moshe Moskowitz very soon, a person that went through in life so much agony, so much pain, physical and mental, but does not let life stop him for one minute. The man is full of life, full of fire, full of positivity, the happiest guy in town, and it's so refreshing to connect with and be in touch with such a person who is taking life and grabbing it and making sure that every day and every minute of his life is positive and productive. So thank you again for joining us and enjoy the podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Tachlis. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today we have again a beautiful, amazing guest. And like I always tell you, our guest, you get to see by the end of the show, during the show, how, why they're so beautiful and why they're so amazing. But today the word amazing is really, really part of the equation. Um, I have the honor and pleasure to interview my dear friend Moishi Moskowitz. Hello, Moishi. Hello, how are you? Awesome, great. Great having you in the studio. Thank you. Um, you know why, why I brought you in here all the way from Lakewood? I have no idea. I also don't have an idea. <laughs> let's try to make it, let's try to make an idea over here. Let's do it together. Yes. Hashem Naseb and Atzliach. So Moish is a very happy, jolly, effective and active human being. But the reason it's a Chiddush that Moish is such an active human being is because Moish's first half of life was not that active, not that smooth, not that stable. And even though he went through many difficulties, which you'll hear about soon, he's determined to be super duper happy. Is that right? 100%. Good. So let's, let's cut straight to the chase and we'll share with our audience who Moshe Moskowitz is. So what's well, doing? Everything is great, Baruch Hashem. So I gotta, I gotta say that you're wrong, actually. My first half of my life has always been happy. I've always been happy. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> Correct. I always had a happy life, an amazing life. I grew up in an amazing family. I had a fantastic family. So, first of all, thank you so much for being on your show. It's an honor. And uh, it's a beautiful way of you bringing out people to your show. It's very nice to bring out the Claudius role of bringing out the better of people, to show people what, what they're all about, and to show people how to make other people better. Yeah, but why did I have the impression that the first step of your life was not so good? Something just flew by my mind that you had a hard first half of your life. A first so half of say, my life. Can we so say hard but happy? Maybe to correct it. Challengeable. Okay. I'll get straight to the point. Um, okay, so I did go. some research and Moshi was born to his happy and amazing parents correct. with a small, tiny medical condition to begin with. Should I interrupt you again? Yes. Okay, so let's start a little bit. So much he was a happy camper. He was born. And he was born in, uh, in 1988. He was born to a beautiful family. 
his father and mother from, I would say, 1994. His father started getting cellulitis, uh -huh. a lot of hardships, a lot of, uh, he had to give up his job, he had to give, give up a lot of, a lot of, the financials didn't, didn't, didn't go so well. So from there he went through, from there a lot of things went, um, like we would have called it sour. But downhill. Downhill. But uh, about Baruch Hashem in my house, it didn't feel ever downhill. Um, we Baruch Hashem were, it was a very happy house. But my father unfortunately suffered a lot. He really suffered, Mama a lot. But my father was always a happy person, a real happy person. But he went through surgery after surgery after surgery. So from the feet and went up to a lot of places to his body. Of course, I was here, I went to my, my I went to, went through my, my, my Chaydelish Yudin, um, my elementary years. And um, everything was nice and dandy. I never felt at home with that, what's it called? Unfortunately, my father went to the hospital a lot. So basically, I, I would consider myself, I'll make it more dramatic, but unfortunately, it's not dramatic. I grew up in a way in the hospital because my father was a lot in the hospital. So it was very, 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 um, it was a dramatic experience, I guess I will say that. But it was a very happy, an amazing family. My mother never made us feel like um, a house of, um, like, a never dig a never dig a house. My, my house was always uh, the most warming house ever. So if you, ask, if you ever ask anybody from the Moskowitz family, Borough Park, meaning whoever knew our family, the most open house, the most warmest house ever. My mother always cooked for people in the hospital, my mother cooked for everybody. But um, my house was always a pride and a moisture. Yeah. My house was very... That's, uh, that's why such products came out from this yeah, house. Yeah, my house was always a pride and a moisture. Moving up the ladder, like we say, unfortunately, um, when I was 15, um, basically, um, my mother started not feeling well. And uh, we didn't know exactly what's going on. She was very, very, very weak. And she, but I started doing testing and stuff. So she went to the doctor. The doctor diagnosed her with lymphoma in the lymph nodes. And um, basically, it was pretty, was pretty fast. And your father was still my alive? My father was still alive. My father was unfortunately the sick one. My mother was still alive. My, mo my mother was still alive also. So I went to, basically, my mother was diagnosed with chalamoid sickness, and Yif Kessler, she passed away. So back to the discussion in the beginning that you wanted to say in the first part, that Moishi was a kid and um, with, uh, was born so with something. So I'll tell you the story. I was, um, there is a thing, it's called Blunt's disease, which the disease is sometimes discovered when you're born, but you're born with it, or you sometimes it could be discovered, but later on in certain ages. So I was, by me, it was discovered later on, meaning, um, Meaning, um, when, when you... Um, How old were you? I was by age 12. Oh. So basically, I couldn't have surgery from age 12, because from age 12 to 15, it's a growing spur. What is this condition? So sometimes what's it's called, it's, a, it's, the, it's instead of the bones going upwards, it goes sideways. Like bow leg. Bow leg, correct. Sometimes it could be from obesity. Sometimes it could be from this. But me, it was both. So basically, they take the bones, they crack it in half, and they can grow again. As I saw online, I now, that, what's it called? It takes faster to recovery. But by me, the, what's it called? A um, few hundred years ago. It, 20 years ago. Okay. It, what's it called? If you did both legs together, it took four to six months to recovery. One minute. You didn't feel anything wrong with your feet. You were... I was always like, a wild kid. Right. I was always having a good time. I was always big chunky so boy. So your, your medical condition was not obvious to anyone? It was obvious. But my mother, what's it called in the way, said he's having a good time. Nothing is bothering him. But as the time went on, it got worse and worse and worse. So back to the discussion. My mother passed. My mother was diagnosed. Chalamoid sickness. Yeet kisser she passed away. That means in five weeks she passed away. So basically, my mother, my mother went with all the doctors. My mother, everything, um, she booked all the surgeries, everything. Everything was beautiful, nice, and dandy. And for a woman at the next, everything was taken. Not everything was, my mother was taken. Oh, so you had to deal with 
a mother who passed away, a father was very sick, yeah, so and your own little peckle. So this, 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 this. It was way back. It was, it's actually pretty, in a way, pretty scary that I had to go through this. It's, um, the goes that my mother actually, as you can see what I told you before, is that a week and a half before she passed away, I was in yeshiva. I didn't even know how sick she was. She, um, for some reason, she was very, very weak. She was in the hospital still. She was in the hospital. She actually called the yeshiva phone. And why, me, didn't, why didn't you call your cell phone? <laughs> you, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, she would have taken a suitcase with her, right? Uh, it was a cell, there were cell phones then, but um, maybe with the... They were as big as a pay phone. It didn't have a filter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, uh, so she gave me, she called the, the public phone. Wow. She, remember the Pebble public phones? Sure. Yeah. the dial? Probably. No, no, not in the dial. What? That was the grandmother's. Fancy, that's fancy. <laughs> Just, yeah. uh, the, basically, she called, uh, she called actually the public phone and she, she told me she wants to speak to me. I was like, what's going on? So basically, I took the next Bikr Cholim bus. Remember Bikr Cholim buses? I walked in, and she sat herself on the, bu on the bed. She tells me, she, <clears throat> she said, um, she said, Moshi, um, as you can see, I'm not looking the best, but you're my youngest, and you're my charmer. A 15-year-old boy with a sick father has to process such a conversation. Knowing that he's going to have to come up with his own, with his own um, surgeries and Waiting stuff. Waiting in the yeah. back, the back pocket. It was not easy, you know. Wow. Hi, let me stop for a minute, please, our interview. I want to talk to you a minute about subscribing to this podcast. Subscribing is not a punishment, it's a treat. We're not going to go to the FBI, we're not going to go to the IRS with it. All we're doing by subscribing when you subscribe, it takes one second to click a button and subscribe. You are making it easy for us to send you right away the podcast as soon as we publish it, as soon as it's ready. Whether on YouTube or on other forms, it takes a second and that's all it does. And I'm really thinking, how can we have so many tens of thousands of viewers, Baruch Hashem, and we appreciate you all so much. But you only have a thousand to eleven hundred subscribers, so you need a treat, huh? I'm here to announce that whoever will subscribe as of now, you know what? We'll include the previous subscribers also. We're going to raffle um, about two weeks, three, two three weeks after the the podcast. We're going to raffle a hundred dollar Amazon gift card for the subscribers. So let's go and do it. We want to be in touch with you. How did you first recover basically from the shiver? How was the I shiver? Wasn't... Was it, was it, um... It's so funny, after leaving my mother's bedside, I met a few close ones, whatever. It's just, everybody says, eh, mach de chesh don't make yourself crazy. She's not going nowhere. She's okay. She's just a, she's just some pills, whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am, ain't no whatever, you know. But whatever, I saw the reality. It's just ain't easy. It was a lot to process. It was a snowstorm in the Levi, you know? <laughs> and the meaning was like a snowstorm. But, um, a storm and a snowstorm. Yeah. But wow. um, it's not easy, you know, um, even these days. You know, who was there to give you chizik by the shiva and right after the shiva? Your father was. To be honest, what to go? My father, was, my father was a great father. My father was always there for us, for me. I had. My brothers were a very tight family. They really are a very tight family. But all these organizations were not around then. To right. Actually, it's like, there was no GoFundMe's. <laughs> GoFundMe, you know. There was no statuses. Uh, High Lifeline was around. Yeah. yeah. They did have these therapists to talk to. So but what, what to be you? honest, what you call this, I wasn't at the moment of focusing of... Um, the grief? The, I wasn't focusing as much of the getting the help. I was more focusing on the shock. Because my mother was always dear. When I'm coming, going to yeshiva, coming home, seeing my mother sitting there with supper ready, wow. it was hard to process. It was really hard to process. You have no idea of having fresh food at the table, being, asking you how your day was, and 
having open arm all the time, that was hard to pass. Suddenly it all stopped. It stopped. Wow. That's why when I, when I always hear these stories about mothers and any parent just passing away, I can relate to it and just, and it's, it's not easy. Wow. It's Even though I have this blockage, I do have this blockage that I can't show emotions about. In a way, you know, when you lose parents, you, you, you do have a certain kind of blockage that you can't show that certain emotion anymore. But when I do find a person, I lose a parent, I do take, I do have a lot of times, I, I take a, a kid or somebody in the side, I do talk to the wow. kid. Especially when you, were, you had your own medical tackle to deal with. Yeah, I had to focus on that. I, could, I, I couldn't focus too much on my mother. I couldn't focus too much on, I, not focus on, I couldn't. Plus, I lost my grandmother six months beforehand, which is her mother, which is why she was also very dear to me. Wow. Yeah, I lost very close. I lost two very close people in my life that year. Well, unfortunately, we have to continue because we yeah. want to hear the rest of the main story. <laughs> a lot of main stories. Yes. Um, so, so, moving forward, I so-called, I went through surgery. Wow. Where, and where? Um, it was in Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai. Thanks to the Beatsy Tversky and wow. blah, 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 the Division, Division of Sereba. Um, that's his name. Yes. What's the vision? We're not calling him by name anymore. The vision is from Eretz Yisrael. That's correct. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Wow. He's a he helped us. He helped out my, my my everybody in, in wow. my family. Wow. They were always there for us. Wow. Special people. So they guided you through into the surgery yeah, process. Yeah. Yes. He got me. Yes. He got me He pushed actually the doctor to make both legs at the same time. Wow. That surgery actually. Nobody wanted to do it. That doctor, he pushed that doctor to actually do it, even though, well, go on, but, but that surgery took 13 hours. Oh yeah, so he actually made the doctor do it, both surgeries at one time. Today, in 13 hours, you conquered the world. Once yeah, you, huh? You do a lot of stuff yeah, in 13 exactly. hours. Yeah, exactly. Wow. But yeah, he actually made that doctor take those, take, make wow. both surgeries at one time. Can you quickly and show, describe what the surgery does and what, what happens right after the surgery? <laughs> Not the actual physical surgery, you said before. Should I do it right now on the table? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, your feet are good, right? Uh, this, uh, this, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, there's a lot of ladies on our plate. You I know, know. <laughs> we make episode two. <laughs> so far it's very entertaining, so sadly it's entertaining. Yeah. But I know there's happy streaks behind it. Of course. Part. So um, I, 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 read a little, I read up a little bit. So this surgery is quite a difficult surgery besides the amount of time. And the, like you said, the breaking the bones and the re... The tibia bones. Like, yeah. like, to be honest, I did not do too much research before I came because... I did. I, you did? <laughs> yeah. You did? Yeah. Oh, good. I like to be... I like to share with the audience That's things good. In, a, in an educated way. Good for you. So... My father did have a, had a heart attack, unfortunately, but he had to have open heart surgery. So in the hospital, there's such a thing that there was um, social workers, right? So um, my father, I guess, mentioned to them that he has to have open heart surgery. He didn't know where to put me. So I guess, I don't even know what my was. I didn't even know exactly what happened. I had, one, I had one brother that had just gotten married. I had one brother that had young children that would take me in, whatever. My father, I guess, got from them Recommendations. Uh, recommendations and stuff that, that there's a place that's called the New York Fundling Hospital, which is a Funding? a fundling hospital. Fundling, okay. Basically, so my father signed me up to go there. Parked you for, in. But he didn't park me in. He could always mean, take me out. So lo um, for parking mean long term wise. Yeah. So basically, he parked me in. It was a Christian hospital. Wow. So uh, it, it was um, so basically a book from yeshiva, a book from yeshiva. Knew whatever and lost his mother. Lost his mother. As a sick his father's father gonna have to go through open heart surgery. He's going to go to the Christian hospital for a few months. More than a few months. Ended up being actually eight months. Wow. Um, basically, arriving there, getting there, a bunch of crosses all over. My father and I did not know. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. But he had no choice. It is, but he didn't even see the building. Anything he even saw. He saw the building. Wow. But I didn't think so. You run over there, getting in there, the only Jew over there, the only kid. Nobody even knew about Judaism, to be honest. I'm I don't sure think there's so. the oh, there's, there's actually there's actually one there's actually one um but one plus there was a great it's a great rehab. They were doing a great rehab so there was exercise therapy. It was great, they were doing it was great. Was, the therapists over there were great, the doctors over there were great. 
But just, you know, um, a lot of interesting things that a 15-year-old Yiddish bocher is not supposed to say. I would say that um, a person, a bocher that's 15 and that's supposed to be, I guess, learning, you want to say, um, in a lot of ways, went from uh, whatever, that went to whatever, yeah. Were you able to keep a little Yiddish kind of fill in, I, To be honest, I, I did do as much as I can. But I, I, in a way, I was in the year for my, my, my mother also. Right. So I actually had Adorama photo around the corner. So I had this very, very wonderful special lady. I wouldn't give her a shout out because she's going to be very upset about it. And, but it's very, a good friend of my mother's actually. She's actually, she was part of the human resources over there. She did the, uh, what's it called? Whatever. Hiring, she, stuff like this. Not hiring. She did actually HR. oversee. She, she was the translator. Not human resources. She, did, she, she translated for all, everybody over there, meaning people that didn't speak English, spoke uh -huh. on the phone, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So she actually, one, 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 she tried kid kicking me, some other, plus her, some other people came to pick me up once, once a day to maybe once a day, which I didn't want to go either. So if wow. I tried going to touch you? Me, how are you mobilizing? No, so I had a special way to go and out of bed. Wow. I had a special, excuse me, bathroom to go. But wow. yeah, they and created I, a bathroom special for me. And I, I believe in this process, there's a lot of weights on your... On your... Yeah, it's, external, it's called external fixators. It's very popular. Everybody, people should know, people know about that. So, wow, it's an amazing part that this woman, some other people in Adorama helped you keep the youths out and the Kaddish process for your mother, mother yeah. going, even though you're in such a place. I'm sure that the difference between Chol and Kaddish being there and coming out was also really Yeah, it was a very, nice, it was a very nice relief um, coming coming out of the rehab center, what's it called? Or the phone like every day, if, oh. I, if I was in the mood of going. It was not easy because wow. I had no patience either way. And it's also physically very hard. Yeah, plus yeah. what's it called? The situation my father was not getting better. He had the open heart surgery and the middle of the open heart surgery, he actually had a stroke. So it was actually kind of a knockdown for me, also like getting down. So knowing my father suffering in the hospital like that, not knowing that he's going to survive or not, that to actually keep him, sounds very graphical, but view discretion is advised, that to actually um, keep him open for two weeks and giving internal medicine. So they didn't even know what's going to be with him. So me knowing what's going on with my father. You were updated, I guess. I was updated, of course. They had to be open with me um, because, you know, it's, it's enough hiding. You know, a person, I'm trying to fight for myself in the year from my mother. Know my father is, I don't even know what's going to be. And just pushing me out to Mincha every day is just a drop down in all kinds of ways. Wow. It was just beyond, like, so much on my head. Wow. And me fighting in therapy every day, just getting better, it's just... It was, I was Mama Sha, I was like... Again, really, um, can we say Gehenim on this world? Huh? Can we say Gehenim on this world? It's Gehenim on this world, but looking, it's like, like we're going to go to the end. It's just... Yeah, it's, 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 it's going back, it's just... Really, wow. waking up every morning, just feeling the heaviness, like what's going to be with Tati. I just lost mommy, like where is Tati? I want to see him already, like I want to see him okay. I, do, why doesn't he come to visit me? Yeah, 100%. It's just, it's a very lost wow. feeling. Wow. That you can't turn to any of your parents. It's very, it's very lost. It's like basically in a way you lost both of your parents. And today if something like this was Chazor Shalom happened to someone, there would be Organizations it coming is, with yeah. guitars. Listen, and I, had, I did. I did have high life line come bring me every, every day supper. But to be honest, I was so not in the mood of no, no clowns, no nothing. I was actually not that kind of patient. I was the kind of patient that people came to visit. I made them feel like the patient. Wow. Actually, you're like, very really, good at that. I was very good way. at that. I, I, I was not the person like feel, making wow. people feel like I'm down. Wow. I'm, even, I, even with my father and everything, wow. I really did not show it. Wow, wow. I want to give a special shout out and thank you for one of the hosts of this podcast. Brooklyn Square is where all these beautiful Let's Talk Tachlis podcasts take place and are being filmed. And I feel that being in Brooklyn Square is a treat for me and for all the tenants that are here because being in Brooklyn Square brings you into such a pleasant 
and happy and positive work environment. You get to meet so many people, all types, all levels, all professions. And there's shuls in the building, there's gyms in the building, there's restaurants in the building. It's such a vibrant, happy, positive place. And when you spend your day between positive people around, surrounded by positive walls, then you, hopefully you produce positive podcasts as well. So my big thank you to Brooklyn Square. So what happened, Amaisa, with your father afterwards, after this, this sad period of being uh, in between with stroke and heart connection? Baruch Hashem, he fought it through. And, and? he survived. Wow. And um, he puts a call. I was in the rehab center for another good, good four months after. And things went on, continue. I kept on, I went for it, and after eight months, we went back to the doctor. Doctor checked through the, checked through the situation, x-rays and yeah. everything. So he came out saying, my English name is Jacob. So as Jacob got some sad news and good news. I was like, what, what do you want, what, what do you want first? I was like, what do you want first? I was like, let's go, like, shoot me, but whatever, it was like, tell me what's going on. Like, straight to the point. Like, one foot came out okay, but you're going to have to go for, for like, intense therapy, no matter what it takes. The other foot, we have to redo the surgery. I'm like, no way. Oh. I'm like, say what? No way. He's like, yes, you have to redo the surgery. I was like, this is after 13 hour surgery? <laughs> He's like, yeah. St- maybe he should, he should have, his license should be revoked. <laughs> he actually was an old doctor. So no, I'm just he, kidding. I told him li- he lost his glasses when he did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, what? This is not funny. Yeah, it's not funny. Wow. So basically, what happens, the process is after that, is that after you come out of the external fixating, which is that's also a surgery, about oh. two hours surgery, but I'm not going to count that in my surgeries, but you can count yeah. it in surgery, no problem. Mine, mine. Mine. Yeah, no, no problem, let's go. On the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you have to go into a body cast, which goes from your ankle up to your waist. Wow, six weeks. And after, not a picnic. No. I wish I was able to go to a picnic, but, uh, but after that, you go back to, you go back to the doctor, and then he checks it out again, and in two weeks ago. It's one of the easy surgeries, right? Yeah, very easy. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Then after that, you just um, you take two weeks, and I guess you go, you go, you go on to the surgery again. A funny joke, backtrack. Because while I was in the in, in this cast, I was actually for him kip the bone rather than fly And he, uh, <laughs> and he, and after him kip, I went down the stairs. It was on the third floor. I was pushing myself down from the waist down the stairs as a weight. With? Yeah, that's the only way to push yourself mm-hmm. down in a body cast. So I came down, and uh, well, I guess I had a, like a small argument with my, my one older brother than me, and it's like, <laughs> and he uh, got his back. I will never forget his back. It got stuck in the door. I was like, yes, good for you. <laughs> a second later, I walk out the door. You know, there's a small step like that step mm-hmm. going to the door. I walk out the door. I was like, don't you ever chat to your brother, not to your kipper. Don't you ever bother your brother, not to your kipper. <laughs> I walk out of the door, I tripped over the door, I flipped no. with my with my cast, no. I landed into into oh. the into the garden. No. See over here? See this mark over here? Oh my. I got like 17 stitches. I ended up like that, like this. Why I broke she, my Why is she embarrassing me alone? <laughs> it was funny actually. You're I walked, me. I broke my hand over here and over here, so I, I walked out of the non nineties. <laughs> With a cast from here to here plus, with stitches. Plus, plus my full body, body cast. And you're yeah, laughing. Yeah, of course. I, you, ever, you ever saw the play? You ever saw the bubble of play? You ever saw the Gordon from Pride? Yeah. Basically, I looked like that. It was actually, yeah. Walked out with a cane. Like that. And if I, I had to go in the taxi in the back seat. I took off. Basically, I traveled around. I took off. I had to take a taxi. I took the whole back seat. Wow, yeah, that funny. was the story. So oh if she ever check anybody, must be okay for us. Okay, yeah, it's the wrong time so to that's the, Exactly, so that's the story. Wow. So moving forward, did the surgery again, the external fixators and everything. I think, I don't remember where I went after that. So I, I don't want to say, I think I went to, and back to the rehab center, whoever came to visit me was amazing people. I had... You went re- to the same place? No, I, back, I just, I'm remembering, you're saying about physics, people come and give you physics. At the rehab center, I had what's it called, Mrs. The, 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 the lady that came to take care of me. Yeah, I'm going to say her name or not? No, I, was, I was about to say it, but I'm no. not going to say it. 
see? Yeah. No, so I'm saying, what's it called? I had my brother come, my one brother older than me come to me to stay for Shabbos every week. I had, I had Mr. Rabbi Landau from, from Avenue L came to learn with me every single wow. Thursday. He tried his best to learn with me. Wow. Then I listened. I had a cousin of mine actually that actually tried also learn with me a little bit. But Salik, every week they Salik tried. Him. Also had, what's that called? I had, I had my, actually one of my aunts, she didn't want me to wash my laundry um, um, in that place. So she washed my laundry every wow. single week, water back and forth. Actually, um, it's a very you fun. Wait, so. You want to hear a funny story? One of my friends actually. He knew I liked his, the way his mother does a sesame chicken. They, they, they counted my calories over there. So he, 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 smuggled, he smuggled in his, the, the sesame chicken to bring it in every week. Wow. Yeah, I, I also had friends of mine from, from, from Williamsburg. They walked over, they walked from Yeshiva, walked over every single Shabbos to visit wow. me from Williamsburg through the bridge. I'm happy to hear some... Uh, yeah, plus some, my, my the family. Some, but the, the family was amazing. this place. And I had this one special person, which is um, always till today's days, which is actually my brother's uncle, which is his real uncle, uh, his real uncle, which is not even my uncle. He took me under his wings till today's days and takes care of me like a father and uncle. Even I wouldn't have been here right now without him. So that's 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 that's, I have special people in my life. I cannot. Can, without, the, without can we have him for the next podcast? Yes, you should. Exactly. Bring him on. He actually walked me down the aisle by my house and I. So, yeah, that's, that's how special emotional. he is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this is how I was. This, that was another. This, this, whole, this whole podcast is like, well, we need to have six podcasts. <laughs> yes. It's the first time me coming out and say, like, people know me as, like, fired up. Wow. But this is the first time hearing the mellow Moishi. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying. Um, Wow, so he felt, he felt he had, um, then the thing was removed, the full body. The full body. He made then a second surgery. surgery. It, was, it was actually, the, the, it was already the third, the fourth, whatever, the third or fourth, whatever. Really, when did he stop, stop counting surgeries? I stopped counting. I think a total was 13 surgeries. So let's go move on. Another. I didn't hear much about your father's petite, eh? No, that's going to be in a second. So I'm saying, interesting story. I went to, one of the other surgeries happened. Right. I actually thought I'm finally... I'm actually off. I'm finally taught. I'm finally done with going through surgeries. Uh-huh. I was in Skvir for for Yomtev. Rashulim and Kippur went to the Deva Ben Shigitu Ben Shur. On the way home to my brother, I was walking with my K because I was able to do weight bearing already my whole entire weight. I said, do weight bearing, it'll be good. On the way, I was walking through a shortcut. In the middle of here, I hear a boom. I'm like, what's happening there? My whole entire foot cracked. But was the, one of my pins I hear cracked, and I fell down. I was like almost collapsed. I couldn't pick myself back up. But in the middle, I picked myself While back up. While walking? While I'm walking. I arrive at my brother. I see my whole entire foot swollen. Boom. So I call the doctor emergency. After you have to go back, a whole entire pin went into the place. We had to redo the surgery again. Same thing happened. Tell me, are you, are you a troublemaker? If I'm a troublemaker? Oh, I saw that question coming up. If I'm a troublemaker, and which kind of... I said, that question is going to have to be put in... <laughs> In sequence. Yeah. I think, it, why are you attracting so much trouble? I think you like it. I love it. <laughs> God loves giving me trouble, huh? Because <laughs> you handle it very well. Yeah. Give you the koiches a long way of trouble. Think should, I think you should stop already, right? <laughs> no, anyway. also this one. I, I, this is also like, this is, this is beyond. I finished surgery one yonta, was was sickest. I finished surgery... It is like two days before sickest. I got a head to come home. My best friend, my, one of my very close friends, stayed with me till sickest, till in sickest to, to recover. Uh-huh. I was able to go home, but I had to do a taxi to come home in sickest. With, after the surgery, in sickest, I came home. Second day sickest, it got swollen like crazy. I had to go back and do another surgery. It's wow. like, went back and forth, back and forth, and that's how I went. The same doctor did most of the surgeries? Yes. Yeah. You know, you're... It was crazy infected. Wow. Yes, Baruch Hashem, I'll never forget this. After all the surgeries, we're not going to go through all the surgeries. I think we spoke enough about surgeries. Yes. I, after all surgeries, um, everybody, all the doc- till today's days, I, I don't think I admitted it on camera. Maybe my close ones know about this. Everybody knows me as the, as the biggest dancers, but Hassan is dancing and like doing. Let's, let's see a little dance. Let's yeah, see soon, soon after that, right? It's sweet, I can't. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, um, um, everybody knows me as doing the moves on the floor, which is, I'm, I love it. I'm dancing wow. is my thing. All the, because all the damage of the surgeries, I couldn't move my ankle. Wow. I couldn't move my ankle. 
And went for and therapy. Everything was done. And couldn't do tense therapy. Everything said the only way I'll be able to move my ankle will be through a, through a brace. They come out with this brace. They said, I can make you any kind of color of the brace. Through a Yankee brace. I was a huge Yankee fan, which I still am. But I was through a Yankee brace or any kind of brace. Like you, like you could do anything. But you'll have to come back and just do it if you because you, you adjust. Just adjust it. I'm like, okay. They gave me the first brace. Walking out of there, I said to myself, I am not going to ever wear a brace. Because I need to wear nice shoes. This is me. I, I cannot. <laughs> this is not me. Oh, yeah. They look good. <laughs> so I was like, this is not me. So I remember that the following morning, I took it by myself. I, 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 I'm going to do the therapy on my own. I know all the techniques, all everything. My father lived, my father had in the backyard, had, you remember those middle steps yeah. in Borough Park? I'm the rusty. The rusty middle the rusty steps. Middle wasn't steps. rusty, but it was middle steps. I broke my bones. Every single morning, it was probably for four to six months. Broke it, broke it, broke it. Phillips finally got a little movement. Broken more, broken more. I went back to therapy. They went to the main therapist. I was like, how much movement do I have? He says, you have a little. He's like, how did you do this? You have 11. I'm like, can I get it more? It's like, if you did it till now, you could push it more. I pushed myself even harder and harder. Till today's days, I only have 28%, 28% movement at my ankle. Capacity. The capacity. It's like, I'm, I'm just saying. That's wow. all, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying how, I per, when a person puts his mind to it, it just puts his mind, I, there's nothing more I can do. It's just, that's how it was. I said, I'm not going to wear a brace. I'm not going to wear a brace. Wow. And that's another crazy story that when I, when no, I. No surgeries. No surgeries. Okay. It could be this more, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not going to search on Google anymore. No. So I'm saying when I, the first time I was able to get the okay to start walking with my ankle, everything, I, what you call it, I. I, um, I went out of yeshiva, I went back to yeshiva a little bit. I went to, uh, I decided to start walking from my first challenge from yeshiva, 51st Street, till Ooh. Seagate, back and forth non-stop. I guess yeshiva was a few blocks away from Seagate. Yeah, of Seagate. course, yeah. 51st Street till, six, till Seagate, back and forth. I walked together with my friends. Hello. Yeah, it was a challenge. That you. was the first challenge I ever did. You're talking about 100 blocks. I don't know how long it is, but I did that. Every fifth street in Borough Park, Borough Park to Seagate, Seagate, back and forth. Back and forth? Back and forth. Wow. It took me about two and a half, three hours. Don't yeah. challenge me to do it today. Please do it, yeah, do it. We'd walked up the steps before, yeah, we did it. Not happening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy, yeah. Was Your willpower stuff. is beyond description. Mm -hmm. Sadly, I want to go back a minute to your father. My father? Yes, yeah. your father. father. Your tired, dear father. And you told me he... He survived, he, became, he got better after the... Yeah, my father was then, he survived, he fought through everything, walked us through uh -huh. it. it was, my father was just one of a kind. My father, and I what guess happened? I, my father kept on suffering, unfortunately. My father kept on going through uh, a lot and a lot and a lot. My father went through surgery after surgery, my mother passed away. He went through uh, everything. My father went through in the upper numbers of surgeries. Upper, um, more the, upper, than, more the upper than 30, D, more upper, than you? The upper D's. <laughs> Wow. The, 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 upper, the, the upper teens. It's like crazy. Really. Because we, we know what each surgery takes. The pain, the suffering, the preparation, the recovery. No, but the, funny, the funniest part of the surgery, God, Hashem tested me again. It's like also... I'm stopping a minute the podcast to inform you again that we have a brand new website. Let's talk tachles.com. The website is made for you to engage with the show. Um, you can write your comments. You can suggest guests that you think will be great. You can also um, come up with ideas. You can tell us what you liked, what you didn't like in our podcast. I hope you liked most of the things. And you can always watch or share with your friends to watch it without YouTube or an audio version only. So go to letstalktachles.com and enjoy it. I remember um... I wanted, to, I wanted to celebrate also with my surgery. I wanted to go ice skating. My brother, my, my brother's brother-in-law wanted to... I'm sorry. My brother, yeah, my brother-in-law, my brother's brother-in-law, which is a very close friend of mine, wanted to go ice skating. One month to Shabbos, we decided to go ice skating. We arrived over there with Floyd Benefield. You know Floyd Benefield? You're sure. part of right? That's the Queens. Yeah, not Queens. They're by the, by the Marine Park Bridge. Yes, That's the Queens, Marine Park. That, okay. Long Island. Yeah. After so, the belt. Yeah, correct. So we decided we had to go. We arrived there. There was no, there's no skates. So you know what's bukhar, you know, everybody likes to have a little fun. So we went to the car. There's a runway over there, right? right. 
So we started, he started going a little fast. So basically, he went a little fast. There's a turning, there's, there's one turning thingy over there. So I started screaming his name. And while screaming his name, I, I, we started going a little upwards. We flipped over seven times. We ended up, we ended up somewhere in the bushes. And uh, uh -huh. I know one thing, I ended up, I, I woke up to that song from Shlomi Gitle. Who is Baruch Hashem? Exactly. So that's that's something Hashem said. Like, yeah, you want peace wow, and that, right? Wow, wow, wow. So God, uh, peace came down. I remember him calling his father. His father, that's who lived. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace came down. 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 Peace came so police, uh, police came out saying that that we flew 28 feet in the air. We flipped over seven times. We ended up we ended up stopping like half a mile off the road. Oh my God. So yeah, the car was totaled, of course. So back to my father. I'm glad you were not totaled. Yeah, back almost. To, huh? How's it sure no, I'm not totaled. No, it sounds like the, the situation was not much. Yeah. High risk, let's call it. With my for my mother, I guess I take the chnusas archem and everything else. Uh huh. My father, I take the smile, equals plus, 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 plus. Equals my shit. And it's just, um, it's amazing. Wow. You just keep on doing it. And and I, I know that he's not alive anymore. No, so he's not. How much after the situation approximately did he? My father passed away 10 years after my mother. Uh -huh. So you had a father for, I have a father for quite a while. I was 26. Uh -huh. My father was also very interesting the way he passed away. My father passed away. I was there. I was there. The final. I was there by the final, final moments. I was there. Shabbos. It was actually very. My father knew a whole time Shabbos that he's going to die. Matzah Shabbos. He kept on saying, Matzah Shabbos, I'm going to die. Matzah Shabbos, I'm going to die. We kept on telling him, "What are you talking about? He, he, he hasn't eaten. He, 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 it's funny. He went into cardiac arrest, and he came back from cardiac arrest. He was recovering from cardiac arrest. He was doing so well. He was in Mount Sinai." And so basically back to Shabbos, he kept on saying, Mata Shabbos, I'm going, Mata Shabbos, I'm going. Then moving forward, we just didn't see it happening. But um, Shabbos by night, he, he was eating everything so schmack, the whole entire Friday night meal. He kept on eating so beautifully. Um, so he kept me by the soup. He, kept on, he, he called me over, Mushi, come here, in Yiddish. But, um, you can say maybe, Yiddish. No, it's okay. Come here for, for, your, for your viewers. I don't know. My viewers are Yiddish. So maybe you'll put translation on the bottom. Huh? So he kept on saying, he told him, Mushi, come here. Come over. He says, What's the, what's the soy for the soy for Tavis from Kim Aluch I was like, um, How would I? He was like, how, how do you say soup in Yiddish? I'm like, Tati Yoch. He's like, Tati, Mushi, what's, what's the soy for Tavis from, from, from Yoch? I'm like, Tati. How should I know? We don't even listen. He's like, I'm like, okay, Tati, I don't think it's happening, but he so I'm like, okay, Tati, I don't think it's happening, but so he, that's, the, that's the way he told me. Then Friday night, we had to go down for x rays, and he basically, by. Basically, he, he, kept, he stopped over there, he said to buy his mitra to say, to say thank you for all the Heineke thank you for the Hashem he has. We just saw the moment happening, and then Mata Shabbos, that's also just stressful moment. I was like, okay, I went back to the apartment, I went to grab a cigarette. I so stressed for like, was such a... I came back upstairs, and I was like, I asked the nurse, like, where's my father? I went downstairs to the house, she's like, something bugged me, I was like, I came downstairs, my brother's downstairs, like, be busy, Tati, Tati's dying, I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? They kept on pumping and pumping. So basically, watching him die, to me, was like... Yeah, seeing your father die in front of your eyes isn't easy. That's something... Yeah! Wow, big list. Yeah. Wow. That's How did you... I'm sure it affected you. It maybe brought up a lot of, of the past pain. That is some, losing my father brought up the loss of my mother and father together. Because I didn't... I just didn't, um, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't handle it in a way. Wow. Because I, well, my mother, I couldn't recover 100%. And I had my father also almost dead. So I couldn't handle it over there 100%. Uh -huh. 
But my father, I lost my father and mother again. So I had like a double, a double fight. Wow. So I didn't know, I, I, I had, and by my father I handled it, whatever. Can I ask how, how did it affect you? Did it have a, sure did it have a happy effect on you, a positive effect? Not at all, no. Knowing you, maybe you started dancing then, no? No, I didn't. I mean, it is. There, there, there was some joking moments, but... I mean long. to say, how did, you, how did you handle it? I didn't handle it. You're here. No, I didn't, I didn't handle it the healthy way. Wow. I started, started, no, I didn't. Who helped you get out emotionally of these... What happened afterwards? Who helped you get out of it? How did you continue life? That's crazy. The, 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 the list is only growing so far. Who helped me get out of the situation my father is saying? After, after getting such a hit, you're still waking up your mother's memories and her death. It's just, um, I, I came into work. I, as, I don't know, you didn't introduce me as I were. I'm working, so. You're working? Yeah. <laughs> Not so for the audience, Moshe is a very... Famous, beloved um, employee. Employee Super Plus in the famous gourmet glut chain. Mine. And uh, I remember, I still remember you in Borough Park. That's today, you, today is in Tom's River, Lakewood. But I remember you. When did you? About that time, did you, you joined gourmet glut? Like you, you were able to take a job? Like I'm the most old. I've been gourmet glut for almost twelve years. So when did you start working on Megala? At that time, approximately? No, before. Oh, before? Ah, uh -huh, I didn't know that. Didn't know the timing. I didn't know you were working there. I don't know the timing exactly. It's too so, long. So, so how does does Gomegla add to this story? Because I, I I know that Gomegla yeah, adds to the story. Gomegla adds to every story. They're the most amazing company to work for. Oh good. The support they just got a good plus. The support they've given. Them. <laughs> I'm not trying to get nothing out of them. Um, the support, the support I've given to me and my family all these years is just way to the sky. Oh. Everybody should line up and try to get a job over there. <laughs> okay. No, seriously, the, it's just amazing company. Wow. With, and you needed all the support all, in the world. With all my emotions, they are. It's just truthful and amazing company. Wow. I'm so happy for you that the Shem gave you. This, this, yeah, this. you can say that again. Wow, yeah. big, 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 big gift. From what I they gave you. me a huge gift. And um, so I guess the people over there started to, started to help you in, get encouraged. No, so get... what happened was I kept on them coming into work. And um, my first thing is, I'll, I'll start like this. I, it's, that's a, I'll continue that in a few minutes, but I'll start like this. When my father passed away, I never really enjoyed alcohol, but I never drink alcohol. My friends drink alcohol, but I get ice and everything. I was actually natural happy in a way, but when my, when my father passed away, I just needed something to block my pain. I just really needed something to block my pain. I thought, but alcohol is gonna make me more and happy, like I'm more of a mellow mood. But so basically, as I could go back to pictures, when I sat shiver, there's a bottle of Glen Livid or vodka next to me sitting over here, and I just sitting over there and just trying to Black myself. From, magically. Magically, just remove my pain. But um, of course it didn't. But I continued drinking because it really numbed me. It really did numb me. So basically that was my tool. And, um, but it really did not do anything crazy for me. How? I just don't, will never forget coming home from work every single day. My wife was sleeping, my kids were sleeping. I would just go and just... Just take a seven ounce cup of vodka or even two, or just drink myself to sleep or not even sleep, but just go and drink and just take a walk around the block. I feel like the biggest junkie from Ocean Parkway walking around and just feel like numb and just don't know what to do with myself. And I was mama lost and just really um, was mama um, I did not, wow. I, I just did not know what to do with myself. You, held, you kept your job while, while you were? Kept my job. But it did, so back to this down moment, the only person that I shared my moments with was, um, I think it was my workmate, which is, um, I don't mind sharing his name, is Ari Chaim, but you know Ari Chaim. Sure. So yeah, I shared my down moments a little with him. The famous I, video he, producer. He, what's it called, he I shared my moments with, but Shashi Segedin, which is my manager then, 
He's the one that really saw it in me. He's the one that really saw it in me. And he's the one that pushed me to go to therapy. And me, I said, what's it called? Me going to therapy. I'm like, ugh, what? I don't need it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, what's about the funding and stuff? Like, right now is not the time. I don't think I'm going to be doing this. He's like, don't worry, I'll get you to put me more. Why am I going to stop, stop, stop? Um, oh, basically, he is. He's, he's stuck. He is stuck. Yes, yes. So basically, he got me an appointment with Mordechai Weinberger. But it's funny, I never ever mentioned to Mordechai Weinberger about my addiction to alcohol. I spoke to him even before I got into the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, I even I spoke to him. Um, yeah, I spoke to him a long time. It's basically, so... So, uh, he helped, he, so they hooked you up with him. him. And basically, I... I uh, watched her call it. I uh, gave him... I, gave, um, I went to therapy. There was a few therapies that, that I had to do by him. Sessions. Session. And I was there for a year. I mean, I was there for a year therapy. Wow. But to be honest, I did not know how much I have in me and how much pain I've caused to myself throughout all the years from my surgeries. You didn't cause from, it. I'm I mean, sorry. Caused. How much, how much I had bottled did? up, how much bottle, how much I've bottled up in me right. and how much I've not spoken to anybody about it and how much I had to speak to somebody about wow. it. And how therapy is important to me, and how therapy is important to anybody. Where I'm not here to promote, make anybody say, "These guys, you have to go with everybody." I'm just saying, anybody with such a problem, anybody that's going through a hospital stay, a dramatic mother loss, or people that are blocking their pains emotions. or emotions, like people think they're better than anything. It's not easy what you're going through. But who am I to tell you that you need therapy? Like it's not easy for me to tell you that, but. I personally, I did not know how much I had bottled up inside. Even though I'm an open book, I'm, I'm a very open book. I'm a real open book. I say the way it is. I, but me personally, when I had bottled up inside, I never knew I had so much bottled up inside. Oh, wow. But the Mordechai Weinberger did with me is just amazing. Wow. Obviously, it was amazing. We see the results right now. Yeah. And I still have therapists that I go to. I still work on myself daily. I, I don't want to tell to somebody I have a therapist. You know, they say the proof I'm is not in the, to say they say the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, correct. Yeah, good proof. Yeah. It's what a daily, flavor? What I'm, not, flavor? I'm not perfect at all. I'm not, it's a daily struggle. Right? I'm not wow. perfect at all. Wow. I, st- I don't stop working. And wow. it's, it's a daily struggle. So let's say some... I always say that the Let's Talk Tachlis family is not here to hear sad things. We're here to learn, to grow. No, we've got to finish off with the other people. stories. Exactly. So first, which story do you want to finish? We've got to finish off with the other story. It says, which people should learn out. That means PTSD. With Shamshi. Okay. Yeah. It's called going back to Mordechai Weinberger. Yes. Basically, I was on the way home from a kid at Shabbos. 42nd and 13. I'm like, it's Shabbos, Shamshi. How are you? I there for like about four minutes, three minutes having a conversation. I gave him a hug. I tell him, Shalom, she see you tonight because the store was open. Shalom, on the way. See you tonight. Second, gave him a hug. A whole building went up in a flames and explosion. Shalom, she goes flying with a sun. I get hit with a, I get hit with a stone, and I don't see Shalom. She, I start screaming, Shalom, she, I can't see nothing. In the middle, I see Shalom, she coming out of the rubble, him hopping out. And I don't know what's going on. I'm, f- I'm frozen. Shalom, she's hopping, hopping, hopping. I don't see what's going on. I tell she's laying down on the ground. I start screaming, Hatsula. In the meantime, I see Shamshi on the floor. One person is running out. One person is running to grab a gargoyle because he's got to do a tourniquet. I turn around. I see viewers' pressures are devised. I see an ankle. I don't know if anybody saw pictures ever of the Boston bombing. People running around without limbs and stuff. But I see... Shamshi's foot hanging. Oh, yeah. uh, it's just, it was a scene that I've never thought I'm ever going to see. I don't think anybody should ever see this in his life. And it happened with two happened one of your closest Tavi, friends. My closest. My, happened to the closest person that, that helped, helped me. so helped much me, through. Helped me, helped me through my father's. Wow. I go through my father's re, um, um, therapy. And he, seeing him on the floor and him almost him out of breath. Saying Moishi on the floor. What I hear, I, what I hear is my brother actually told me a few weeks ago in the restaurant. It says that the member on the scene saw me over there. He saw me. I was mamash paused like a freeze when he arrived. Didn't even know that I was part of the whole scene. 
I had a swollen ankle and everything else. Wow. But yeah, two people died the old... in that. Two people died in that in that, in that explosion. Yeah, I was going to say to the audience that this was a, one of the very famous explosions from yeah. Mar Park. And some people even died in this. And then I had to go back to Monty Weinberger for a special therapy. It's called EMDR therapy. It's emotion therapy. People use it for mental health. People use it for people for the army uses it when they come back from the army. They use it for emotion trauma. Emotion trauma. Wow. But my wife, unfortunately, I don't know if she's gonna like what I say, but she went through with this. I woke up with nightmares. You have no idea what this knows. It's called survivor's guilt. I kept on telling Mati, why wasn't I on the floor? Why wasn't I the one on the floor losing the ankle? Why was it Shamshi? Shamshi should have never been the one on the floor. The crying that went on in that office, I was like, no, Shamshi should not be in the hospital right now. I should be the one in the hospital. This is not fair. This is not fair. And it went on for months. Wow. Waking up from nightmares, sleeping only maybe one hour a night, half hour a day, I had to go to work. This was just the way and beyond, but Baruch Hashem, we're here right now, and Shamshi is walking on two feet, Wow! and we're here. I, w I would call you an archaeology, you know? The more you dig, the more you find. The more you learn, the more you discover. How, how was your Amina through all these very difficult times? As Bukha, like I said, in the in the, in, yes. the, in the I think you, you you would divide it in three big periods in your life. Bukha, Bukha, mother passing away, Yingle, surgery. Yingle, my no, 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 no. I'm talking in the suffering years. And, and then, then you had your father's time. And then you had started to finally go to therapy and become be get better. You had this third trauma. I mean, this. I'll tell you the truth. It's a very interesting, very deep question. It's not a deep question. It's asking a person that really. Um, I hope you're not upset that I'm asking. No, you. I'm not upset. On the air. I can forward it in a minute if I want to. But Amina, um, I have a few different ways of Amina. Amina, uh, whoa. Okay, which part do you want to know first? No, I, we know we all believe that the Ibish that Hashem is running the world, and Correct. whatever happens to us happens by Him. Totally. And we also believe that whatever happens to us is to the good. And how does a human being suffering so much say to himself, whatever happens and happened to me? Listen, als Bukher and als everything, meaning the, the surgery that went through, you're saying, that's, some, that's something that took a long time to take in and realize that Hashem is actually the one that is actually the Running king. Running the show. Because I was actually having a karate match with him. I'm being honest. Yes. It was actually, I'm was totally very, was, not surprised. It was, was actually not easy to accept that part. I had to go through a lot of tough punches for him to say, okay, I love you. Okay, stop. Gindig is gindig, enough is enough. Mm. But I still didn't learn my lesson, to be honest. But I think my smile pushed it through. And I think, after all, he came through in a big way. Listen, there's no, there's no one, there's no better proof in the world than what you, the way you are now, the way you are today. But me telling you about Amina is going to be, I can't, I, I think, me waking up every morning, starting my morning, I find different kind of ways to find Hashem. I really do. I, I find different kind of ways wow. to say good morning to Hashem. Wow. I daven every day. I, after davening, I... I search different kind of things to find the shame. And, you, and you're finding him. I'm finding him in different wow. ways. Because I may sound heebie-jeebie, but no. Because I went through so much, I learned to connect him a different kind of way. I, I, can't, I, I can't say it to the audience because it's too much for them to handle. No, no, no. That's not the, that's not the me, goal. But for me personally... The goal is to the summary message. People are listening. And they but my Yiddish guide-wise, what's it called? I... I learned a lesson after my father passed away. I, I, did, I, do, I did work in my Yiddish guide in a big, big way after my father passed away. And that, that, that built my minna a lot. I got connected to one of you people. Um, okay. Yeah, so I did. I, and a chush I, of a person. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that ended a little kind of way in a different kind of way. But 
he helped me work on my men in a lot of ways. Wow. Yes, and without, these days, w- um, without a minute we can survive. 100%. And I really, I didn't expect such a loaded conversation because I see you every once in a while and the smile and the, the beaming happiness coming out of you does not match the story you just said. <laughs> and I'm really here to, to salute. I'll do an actual salute to you for being so strong and so open about what happened to you and about your feelings and about you, some of your downfalls. And I think you are a major, amazing example for people to learn from you how to fight and not let life bring you down. And this is the biggest message I think that this podcast can bring to the viewers. 100%. So what do you want to say to conclude, Moshe? Conclude it? I'll say one thing before I conclude it. But if you ask me about a minute, I think the biggest part of a minute and the biggest part of a minute that you can see in Kalei at all is that you say every single, that's what I, that's what I thought. Um, first of all, I've, I've learned it with my Haralisa, and I've learned it um, by, what's it called, by Pasha Bashala, by Shabbat Shira, that you, and we say it every single day, by Baaz Yushar, right? Every, what's it called? You say the Pusik Zechari Ravai, right? Kalei Yisrael, when they walked out of Mitzrayim, right? They all, they all had the option, what's it called, to think Hashem is like, like who, in a way, who is he, right? Who, like, they, go, they, all look, they were all able to look back on all the blood that Hashem shattered, through all the kids, all the blood that went on over there in Mitzrayim. But they all, they all went out of Mitzrayim, they all got to the Yamsuf, and they said, Zechari van Vayi, you are Hashem, you are the sins of Hashem, you are you are God. No matter what, we're not going back. You are we are we are we are yours. You are mine. Right. right? Yeah, and you take you you taking along these words. You're taking along these words. And they guide you and lead you. Wow. So, so wow. That's the that's the that's the way we can. That's the way. And Vai is more than a minute. When Vai is meaning of beautifying. Not only I I believe in Hashem. I also consider him a, a beautiful and a nice uh, mashpia and manhig on me. That's correct. Wow. It's a big madrage to upgrade the minute, to bring it above regular and we need minute. To do, and, we need to do this, we need, and we need to do the same praise Hashem, to Hashem, even though we go through challenges. Not everyone can, but you, Boch Hashem, have the, have the koiches. I want to really thank you for coming. And I know it wasn't easy. I assume it wasn't easy. Some of the questions and the answers we we, we flushed over here, but uh, I see a big smile on your face, so it makes me a little bit uh, relieved from the, the guilt I have for interviewing you and bringing everything up. And I really want to thank you, and I want to beg you to continue exactly what you're doing, and please stay out of trouble. No, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here with you. And I uh, hope people will take something good out of this. Not a whole people will definitely take good out of this. And um, give me a, give me a thirty second message for the audience. Guys, you be you. I'll be me. Keep on smiling. And um, I hope you guys appreciate this interview. And I thank Mr. Blumenthal for this interview. And um, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, even though it doesn't look so bright right now. Just put on a lighter and let it shine. <laughs>